Hi everybody, it's Dr. Laura with Connect My Brain. I am so glad that you are joining me today. And as promised, we are going to talk about cholesterol. We are going to get down into cholesterol because it has been given such a bad rap. So how did I figure it out for myself, for my patients, and for others? About 20 some years ago, uh, I really was incredibly irritated so easily. And I couldn't understand what in the world was going on. There wasn't something, some event that I could put my finger on. It, it literally just felt like an electrical current inside and I, I just couldn't ever settle it down. So I went to a functional medicine provider who did functional lab work. And we'll talk about why that is important. And I had my own personal lab work done. And I do certain things every single year on myself to kind of monitor progress and just things that I'm very interested in. But I found out that I had low cholesterol. And I thought, well, isn't that a good thing? And what I learned was, no, that there's a range. And that range can potentially be different for each and every one of us to just kind of take numbers. And typically what you're getting is total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, VLDL. They've, they've at least included the components. But what these particles really represent is the size of the cholesterol. And what you're really looking for, rather than just a number, is you're looking for the ratio between them. And because of different ethnic backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, we can have different ratios. It's not one size fits all. And this is where having lab work done on yourself gives you a completely different picture. So what we want is a greater ratio of the big, fat, fluffy ones in comparison to the small ones, small cholesterol molecules. So how did cholesterol get such a bad rap? Well, it has to do with inflammation. And inflammation is the root of every problem that you will ever go through. And it can be a variety of sources. But in this particular conversation, we're mainly talking about our vessels, our vasculature, our blood vessels. And most of the time, what we've heard is that cholesterol causes uh, blood vessel damage, heart damage, and can lead to heart attacks, strokes, etc. Well, it's very interesting because really what happened was they were looking at a vessel, a blood vessel, and what they found was tearing inside of the blood vessel. So for my podcast audience, think of a hose and think of if, let's use, let's use an electrical cord, one of those orange electrical cords. And let's say there was a nick in it and you put some electrical tape, but maybe that would change the diameter of that electrical communication. You could also think of it with the, the hose, the garden hose as well, that you, as, as long as you have full diameter, then water can go through, electrical current can go through. But if there's ever any change to the diameter, it, it's, it's going to change the flow. Well, what happens with inflammation that has 
a greater propensity to damage our blood vessels is literally it can tear the inside layers. And so what was found was small particles of cholesterol and therefore cholesterol is the biggest problem in the whole wide world. So cholesterol is small particles, it's medium-sized particles, and it's large particles. When we have a higher ratio of large fluffy ones, the chances of those getting trapped inside damaged blood vessels is minimal. So now I don't want you to think that I'm saying you don't have to worry about it. Just it's not really the truth about how cholesterol can get trapped, but it, it's about your, your lifestyle. If you have, or if you're prone to inflammation, then having a particle test, and I think everybody really should have this. I think everybody should get baseline lab testing in order for them to realize where their metabolic makeup exists. You know, here at Connect My Brain, it's a three-tier approach. It's the body, the movement, it's the chemistry, and it's the brain. So we can do a lot of things mechanically. We can do a lot of things with the brain, but it's the metabolic, the fuel house, the fuel, the food that you consume that eventually is going to run your system. Now, here's an interesting fact about cholesterol. You actually make 80% of your own cholesterol. Wow, that's a big number. So how could it get such a bad rap? You only get 20% from the food you eat. Now, I don't want you to run out there and let's just start eating all kinds of cholesterol producing food, especially if you don't know what your particle numbers are. But here's some information to help you hopefully get interested in the learning of the why behind this. Well, this actually became a huge pharmaceutical industry. And what I'm sharing with you over here, especially for the viewers who go over to YouTube, and please go over to YouTube and watch this so that you can see what I'm talking about. So there is a great documentary and it's called Staten Nation. And for the podcast audience, I have it pulled up on the screen so you can at least go to statinnation.com and read about the great cholesterol cover-up, raising serious questions about the mass prescription of cholesterol-lowering statin medications. Billions of dollars are spent on statins each year. However, leading medical experts interviewed for this film assert that the benefits of statin have been exaggerated and the adverse effects are much more common than generally reported. Now, while we are together... The widely used drugs called statins taken to lower cholesterol could soon become much more popular. I've read all the cholesterol medications mm -hmm. and I've never been this impressed. And you take a look at this because statins have become one of the most widely prescribed common. drugs in and medical history. And one of the things that happens to a lot They've of people. They've been hyped to a degree that is very hard to believe. Deaths were reduced 20%. But what we do know is in primary prevention, there is no life When you lower cholesterol by any means, you can have adverse effects just from that. I started to keep a diary about statins because my memory loss was so bad. My walking started to get very tired. Tired legs. I took Lipitor for two years. And now I'm also taking Lipitor. The times when I, I wondered if I really wanted to go on with it. So where does this idea come from? So cholesterol was a convenient villain. 
It was pure manipulating it, or we could call it fraud. These issues can see that the closed issue now everybody knows what causes heart disease. We are beginning to see that a lot of the facts that we are given are actually somewhat manipulated. International opinion leaders say it, the national opinion leaders agree, no one's going to stand up and go. This stands has organized crime, but there's a lot more money in this, and in fact, many, many more people get hurt. Is that they were on about 11 to 14 different medications, and absolutely, you are going to have different side effects, not only from each individual one, but how they mix together, and unfortunately. So often we are receiving medications from different providers and nobody's talking to each other. And therefore you don't always know what that individual is taking and there's combinations happening and it can lead to a lot of problems. One of the biggest things that happens in our elderly by reducing their cholesterol by even more. And most of the time, they're already at a, at a safe number and you're lowering it to an even lower number and they become depressed. And so when I talk about cholesterol, we all know that high cholesterol has a potential to lead to heart attack, strokes, uh, cardiovascular disease, et cetera. But low cholesterol has those same things as well as depression. So I got very interested in learning about this, especially because the way that I felt. And so I began to learn more about cholesterol. I had my own particle tests done. I have a very high ratio of large particles. So I knew that I was not at familiar risks for really working on my cholesterol. And I, because I work in pediatrics, I got very interested in it because I started to find, and this was 10, 15 years ago, that the children that were then labeled autistic and had language delay also had low cholesterol. And I found this in one child after another. And in fact, back then, NIH was asking for abstracts and I put my hat in the ring and of course nobody paid attention to me and that's perfectly fine, but they did pay attention to the University of Ohio who had the same idea and they began to do research on low cholesterol and autism and language delay. And now if you were to do a search well, let, let's just do one together. I'm going to put in low cholesterol. We're going to make this a very active podcast today. And oh, let's give that a space and autism. And let's just see what comes up. And so now there's all kinds of pieces of information, there's the NIH right there, uh, that are talking about cholesterol and autism. Okay, so let's also look at low cholesterol and depression. I also saw Alzheimer in that. Okay, uh, low cholesterol level can reduce the availability of serotonin, making the patient more susceptible to, ah, depression. Okay. So you can see this information for yourself. There was just there too, mental health. I'm going to do with low cholesterol because there's also a great resource that I'm going to show you, but lower levels of cholesterol and blood are associated with heightened risk of developing major depressive disorder, cholesterol, mood, and vascular health low cholesterol. Uh, this one's saying not associated with depression, but again, I think it's important to look at the whole piece of information, who wrote the article, but there are a lot of pieces to this today. Um, there is another really great resource 
Great Plains Laboratory. And if you go over to their resource section and look at their webinar library, and underneath there, you can see all different kinds of resource articles, but there you are on cholesterol. Now, some of these are about two hours long and they are meant to be educational. So if you are ready to learn more about it, just be ready to sit down and look at this information. I think it's really important to embrace as much as you can in what's available information, but then what you can do is you can start to associate your lab findings with this information, okay? So it's not just about let's read an article and go from there, but let's take a look at what's available and then match it to what your labs say and then have an idea of what can you do to address it and there is there is there's a great company called new beginnings nutraceuticals nutritionals i'm sorry new beginnings nutritionals and they have a product there called sonic cholesterol and it is a fabulous product. Now, you will have to have blood work in order to order this product. Uh, I love how the company functions. They do everything very safe. So your provider has to get you lab work and then they could order the product or give you access to then be able to order the product. Um, it's made from lamb's wool, which is very interesting to me because, and, and I really appreciate that because one of the greatest sources for cholesterol is egg. And unfortunately, when we do lab work, we also look at food sensitivity and it is incredibly common that most of these kiddo, kiddos and adults have some kind of sensitivity typically to chicken egg. And the reason people have sensitivity to egg has to do with a history of vaccines. Vaccines are typically mediated in egg. And so if you have been vaccinated and that shows up, you 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 can't you can't use chicken egg to try to raise your cholesterol because your, your body is reacting to it. When I started doing functional lab work on myself, and I am fully vaccinated as a child, I don't do anything else now, but as a child, I was vaccinated. And uh, as a child, I also got a very atypical form of measles, which put me in darkness for 14 days. Measles typically does not cause that type of a reaction where some other organ is going to be impacted. And when you get an atypical form of this measles, then it can attack the eyes. And even to this day, I have a very high sensitivity to light, but I had to live in darkness for 14 days. But when I started doing functional lab testing on myself, I, I had a few food sensitivities. And as I've mentioned before, a lot of people have different opinions about food sensitivity testing, but what I'm able to pick up from this is, are the foods that I'm eating right now, are those the ones that are showing up? So if I'm reacting to what I'm eating, it's really going to have another layer to the picture of overall gut health. And if I'm going to try to improve my gut health, it's important to see what I'm reacting to. So over the years, I've worked really hard at taking out the foods that are more reactive to me. Now, once you go through a cleaning process, especially with one of the labs that we use, you can literally start to rotate food back in and you would start with more moderate reactive foods and only do one at a time 
and give yourself four or five days. So, I mean, there is a way to bring certain foods back in once you've healed your gut. But if food, if you're reacting to things and you don't take them out, what's going to happen? Where did we start this conversation? We started it about inflammation. If I'm just going to keep eating the foods that my body's reacting to, even though I am, you know, cleaning it out, you're just not giving your belly a break. And, you know, it, it's really good to give your body a break from many things. Not only are you going to have to take a break from the foods that show up on the lab tests, but there are certain foods that are known to be pro-inflammatories. So gluten, I can't help it. It just is a food that has been created uh, and, and it's processed. So we're, we're taking wheat and we're mixing it and the gluten now is causing incredible reactions across the board. I, there's just no reason to put your body through it. Uh, corn, dairy. Uh, why dairy? Because it is taken from an animal that has four stomachs. We are going to uh, get it really hot and pasteurize it. We're going to remove enzymes and good bacteria. The bacteria that the human body needs to break it down. So you, you, you got to just, if you really want to get your gut health optimal, you're going to have to be willing to make some changes. And then if we can improve the, the healing process of that gut, making it work the way that it's supposed to, well, then that also means that all the other systems surrounding, like your liver, who needs to make your cholesterol, is going to have the ability to do that. What does cholesterol make? It makes your reproductive hormones. So I don't know if you were watching over here on YouTube, and if you noticed in the search, it even had low cholesterol and infertility. And it makes your neurotransmitters for your brain. We saw the one that said about serotonin, but you also have dopamine. You also have other transmitters in your brain that are trying to help your brain function the way that it's supposed to. Now, these pieces also have to go back into the other systems that are needed in order to run the whole orchestra. And where, what I want to interject at this moment before we talk about the third thing that cholesterol makes is we've talked about it in other podcasts is the genetic snippet for the MTHFR. So MTHFR is your methylation pathway. This particular gene, if it has a mutation on it, can also make it very difficult for your body to get toxins out. It's also regulating mood. So certain snippets have a higher risk for depression, for anxiety. And so it, it, it's not just looking at cholesterol. It's not just looking at the MTHFR. It's not just looking at your diet, but it's looking at the whole body. Do you know how they found this gene called the MTHFR? It was related or found through women having multiple miscarriages. Well, there's our vascular system. That means too that the MTHFR can have a huge impact on our vascular system. How did we start this? We started it talking about inflammation damaging the vessels, the vascular system of the body. So it, it's never just one thing. 
It's never just high cholesterol, low cholesterol, MTHFR by itself. It's about your metabolic signature. What do you need? And when you combine looking at these tests and figure out where your higher risks are in comparison to something else, then you can make an educated decision. You can begin to support your body in a very personalized way. Then if you don't get the changes that you're really looking for, then you can always add, but you can't always take away the ill effect that comes about by just throwing medication down the mouth, punching stuff into the skin. We've learned even from the last three years, finally, they're, they're admitting that this stuff doesn't just stay in a muscle belly. It can't. It goes into your blood system. Every puncture you get. That's why even if you got cortisol put into your body to help with pain, one of the things that they tell you is make sure nobody rubs this area because they're wanting it to stay there as long as possible, but it will eventually diffuse out. I mean, you, you have to look at the logic behind our body. If I stuck a needle in my arm, when I pull it out, what do they do? They put a Band-Aid over it because it's bleeding, right? It's touching your blood system. And once it goes there, it's going everywhere. And they have found this. Please, if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to the podcast with Amy Kelly from iClout.io, as well as James, Rugus James Ruguski talking about the World Health Organization. Folks, it's time. We've got to open our eyes. We've got to educate ourselves. We've got to put our bodies into optimal health in order that we can stand and stand firm and be able to handle anything that's coming at your system. That gut brain connection is everything. We now know that if there's leaky gut, there's leaky liver, there's leaky brain. Everything can start very simple. We go into the gut system and we first heal that gut so that everything that you eat will break down and be utilized in the direction that it's supposed to do, what it's supposed to do. We need the fuel to not only run our body, but this is what gives us cellular energy. Why does it take so long when we walk down a more holistic pathway in order to heal ourself? Because Sometimes we just want to take something and we want to get out of the problem, right? But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. One medication may mask a symptom, but then begin to create another. Just like we were talking about with the statins. The statins were leading to lower cholesterol, lowering it more, lowering it more to the point to the point that it literally was causing muscle wasting, peripheral neuropathy, just another symptom. I can remember one day, a woman who was doing neurofeedback at the office came in and said, you know, I really think I need to get back on my regular chiropractic adjustments because I am really having a lot of pain in my leg. And this was one of those situations where she did not reveal all of the medications that she was actually taking. And then when she told me, I was like, I really need you to go watch this documentary. She had no idea 
that there had ever even been case studies associating statin medications with peripheral neuropathy. And what they were getting ready to do was to decompress what they call compartment syndrome, literally do a surgical procedure, cut it open to relieve the pressure. Wow. When I told her about the ill effects of statin medications, she went off of those medications and lo and behold, the peripheral neuropathy completely abated. That is how fast it happened. So it, it's important to get this information. And it does take time. Why? When we're feeding our body correctly, when we are lowering the toxic level, when we are changing our diet, getting exercise, drinking water, you have to wait until those unhealthy cells begin to get a new role model to follow. This is like the power behind neurofeedback. Everything in your body is a feedback mechanism. Now, there's really no test out there that's going to tell you your cells have a functional capacity of and some number. But let's just say if we've got symptoms going on, maybe it's fatigue. That's one of the first ones that typically happens. Then maybe we've got some bloating. It's hard to lose weight. Maybe it's something with elimination. We've got constipation, diarrhea. Maybe we've got rashes on our skin. Maybe we're not sleeping. Um, maybe, we're, maybe we're irritable, okay? Whatever it is. Let, let's just say when we are facing symptoms, just for a general numeric value, let's say those cells are functioning at 75%. So now every part of your body has cellular turnover and there's a number of days for each and every part of our bodies. Your, your stomach is the fastest and why it's one of the greatest places to start because you can get those cells turning over very, very quickly. But first we have to become aware that there's a problem. And then depending upon what steps we take, to figure out what am I going to do for this problem? Maybe we go to traditional medical approaches first. And the labs that are used in our traditional healthcare system, they are changing the within normal limits every year based on who took the test, the age of the person, male, female, uh, et cetera. And they're literally changing that within normal limit. And so as long as you stay within that within normal limit, you're fine. See you later. It's all in your mind. Okay. Just like the CDC has changed the developmental milestones. Now you can be 18 months old and considered normal to walk. Folks, that's not true at all. Just because we change a within normal limits, all that is doing is giving a provider the out of saying you need anything because they can't. If they are regulated by the insurance company, they have to stay within those parameters. So they will not be able to make recommendations unless they're willing to step out of that box. That is one of the biggest reasons why I do not take insurance in my office. I am not going to have an insurance company who has only learned billing codes, diagnosis codes, and they set the value, tell me how I can manage my patients. But in the world of functional medicine, there is much broader representation of human health. These are people, including myself, getting back to the biochemistry, what it really takes to run these human bodies.
And that's why it is not a one size fits all CBC with diff panel that you should be looking at in order to know what your real health level is. I call this your state of health. And especially if you're getting ready to have a family, you need to know your real state of health prior to conception. It's imperative for the well-being of your future baby that your body and your husband's body are in optimal health in order to conceive. Now, once we decide, here's what I've been doing. I'm going to do these functional labs. I find out what's going on. Now you have to put this in action. And sometimes, at least what I've noticed in practice for this is my 28th year, is that changing food, changing habits is really not that easy for people. It just isn't. So once you get some momentum and you start feeling better, and your cells are turning over, maybe the first time it turns over, maybe at least it doesn't drop below that 75. Because it can. It can keep dropping until the environment changes. If you're experiencing cravings, you are literally getting a message from your gut to your brain. Feed this environment down here. And that's what draws you to go eat certain foods like sugary, complex carbs that break down to sugar, pastas, breads, etc. You know the drill. But it's going to take time for those cells to then say, wait a minute, the inflammation has been gone for a while. The inflammation has been gone for a while. And now, now I can actually repair a little bit. And now maybe that 75 goes up to 80. But you absolutely begin to feel the difference. And when we do this with children, we really encourage the whole family should do it. The whole family should be involved in the process of changing habit changing lifestyle, changing diet. We are at the tip of the springtime. Spring and fall are wonderful times as the body is going through changes just like outside. Put a change into a decision. We are going to do this. Check out labs. We can have a conversation remotely. We can get labs to you. We can do everything even right over a remote call. If you're in the Atlanta area, you've got no reason not to come to Connect My Brain. If you have a question, reach out. You can put that information right on the website, Lead Sheet, and I will be the one to call you back. Tell me when you're available. It's so much easier for us to connect faster if we know when you can actually take a call. There's so many important pieces to working on this body. And last but not least, the third element of cholesterol is it creates our stress chemicals. Bingo! If we've been in stress, have we been in stress for the last three years? Have our kids been in stress for the last three years? Like we don't even have to go any farther. If you've been in stress, you are burning through all of your things faster than you can believe. And that's why a micronutrient test shows us where those deficiencies are. And it is, it's important for you to see it. If you see it, then you understand. But we've got to support cholesterol because your body needs it in order to survive, in order to make the chemicals for your brain, in order to have a family, in, in order to manage stress. Cholesterol is not a bad guy. 
You know, we've been driving it down for 50, 60 years. You now even have Cheerios saying, lowering your cholesterol. I encourage you to dive deep into this element of your chemistry. Cholesterol is needed. It is not a bad guy. What we do is we figure out what your personal signature is and support you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. You can tell this topic is a uh, a favorite of mine. If you want to reach out, the office number is 678-501-5172. Check out the website, connectmybrain.com. Thanks always to my team, Marcy Page. She's the greatest podcast manager. I've been so blessed to have her in my life. And Natasha for writing our blog so that we can have so many different forms of education to serve our community. Be blessed.